In this video, we're going to continue to practice real quick analysis of IR spectra, trying to underanalyze, not overanalyze the IR. And on this page, we just have a lot of pairs of compounds, and we are being asked how to use IR to distinguish between the two. So if we had a molecule and we knew it was either this one or this one, and we wanted to use IR, how could we really quickly distinguish between the two of them? What we're looking for is just like the fastest, most significant, most prominent, easiest to identify peak that will allow us to distinguish these two molecules. The OH peak is very broad and very predominant. So um, if we had these two molecules together, it were these two molecules to compare and we were trying to distinguish between them, we would look for the presence of the OH peak which is gonna be around 3000 wave numbers. And if it's there, that means we have the molecule to the left. And if it's not there, we have the molecule to the right. Next set of molecules, again, you know, they both have carbon oxygen double bond, so we don't want to use that to try to help us figure out that's not going to be easy. But again, we do have the OH group. So again, we'll be looking for the presence of that big, broad OH peak around 3000 wave numbers. Um, for these two molecules, how could we distinguish between them? We have carbon oxygen double bond versus uh, OH group. We could look for either one because they're both pretty easy to see. So in this case, we could do whatever we wanted. The OH group is just impossible to miss. So we could look for the OH group at around 3000, or we could look for the carbon oxygen double bond, which is going to be around 1700. How could we distinguish between these two? And we see there's just kind of a pattern here. Um, looking for the OH group, I'm just cutting and pasting. Looking for the OH group, which is gonna tell us if we have this molecule or this molecule. What about these two molecules? How could we distinguish between the two of them? Um, this one is not always as easy for students to point out. So we would have one NH peak and this NH peak is going to be um, pretty far to the left of the 3000 line so it's going to be to the left of the 3000 line and this molecule would have no nh peak what about these guys a carbon carbon double bond versus a carbon oxygen double bond the carbon oxygen double bond is easier to see than a carbon carbon double bond although they're both pretty you know, pretty distinguishable. So look for the carbon oxygen double bond. It's going to be strong. It is usually going to be broad. We've seen one example where it's not broad. Strong and broad at about 1700 wave numbers. The carbon carbon double bond is typically sharp and medium intensity. Now let's practice matching molecules to their spectra. So on this page, we have three different spectra. We have four different molecules, and we're going to try to match these molecules up to their different spectra. So I'm going to start like with, the, you know, it's a good habit to get in of just kind of drawing our lines at 1500 and 3000 because we want to know what to ignore and what to not ignore. So we just ignore all of this stuff, stuff over here. I notice here that we have a special hydrogen that's something I need to pay attention to we've got a carbon hydrogen bond of course and then we've got something going on right here that little peak it's um, in the, kind of the center of this area and in, in the center of this area that typically means that we have a triple bond I'm not even right now I'm not even paying attention to what these possible structures are so I'm just kind of ignoring them and just sort of thinking about what these different peaks tell me I'm gonna then I'm gonna go back and kind of match them up um, for our next one, let's draw our line at 1500 and we're going to ignore all of this. Let's draw our line at 3000. Um, this might be something that I should pay attention to, but also maybe not. It's pretty easy to be tricked by stuff over there. This I notice, let me kind of erase my line for a second. Notice that these carbon hydrogen peaks are not as strong as normal. So this usually is telling us that we have a benzene ring in the molecule. And then we have this guy right here. That's a nice broad, that's a carbon oxygen double bond. This, is this something I should pay attention to? Maybe, maybe not. It kind of looks like a carbon carbon double bond. 
Um, and as you can see, as I'm doing this, I'm not like really trying to spend a ton of time on this stuff because I know that this is a matching game. So I'm just going through and identifying the things that are most significant to my eyes. And maybe I don't have to spend a ton of time on analysis. Lack of the CH peaks is telling me that I have a benzene ring. This broad is broad up here. It does come to a point, but it is broad carbon oxygen double bond. And that peak right there looks pretty important it's probably a carbon-carbon bond. So now that I've got just kind of a general idea of what might be in these three different molecules, I'm gonna go back up to the top and see if I can start making some, making, matching some stuff up. Um, so I did find a molecule that has a triple bond and I've got one choice of a molecule that has a triple bond. So I'm gonna say that this is a carbon-carbon triple bond and this little peak out here, the special hydrogen at the end of a carbon-carbon triple bond. So this molecule right here definitely corresponds to this spectra. So I've got it figured out. That one figured out. My next two molecules, um, spectra, they definitely both have benzene rings. So that means I'm gonna eliminate this guy right here. I don't think that that's what I have. Uh, for these two molecules, so telling them apart, they both have benzene rings, they both have carbon oxygen double bonds, and I did find that in, in both of them, benzene rings with carbon oxygen double bonds. These peaks here are probably the carbon-carbon double bonds in the benzene ring. So how could I tell these two molecules apart? Um, well, this one, the aldehyde group, this one has the two peaks that are both um, around 27 and 2800 wave numbers. And I didn't notice either one of those peaks. I tend to not notice those peaks unless I'm intentionally looking for them. So I'm gonna go back to the spectra and see if I can find those two peaks. And it looks like right here, there are those aldehyde peaks. Like I just didn't even notice them initially, but now that I know that to look for them, there I can find them. So that tells me that this molecule with the aldehyde group is this spectrum, and this molecule is this guy down here. Let's practice, let's practice this one more time. We've got one more set. So this time we have four spectra and five different molecules to choose from. And again, I'm going to start by not looking at the molecules of my choices because I, I don't want to kind of cloud my initial analysis of this. So when I'm looking at this, I see this very broad peak. That's definitely an OH group. I see this strong broad-ish peak right there, carbon-oxygen double bond. We've seen this a couple times, like this makes me think that it's a carbon-carbon double bond. And since my OH peak is not like super, um, there's, not, there's no CH peak that's super intense here, this makes me think that there's also a benzene ring in the molecule causing that CH peak to be really stunted and it's you know staying completely hidden under the OH peak. And if that's the case, then this would be a carbon-carbon double bond. For my next molecule, here's this line. We're gonna ignore all of this stuff. Here's this line right here. Um, we've got this because it's kind of in the middle. This looks like a triple bond. We've got something right here. This appears to be our carbon-carbon double bond showing up again. And then because our CH bonds are um, kind of medium, relatively not as strong as normal, I think that I probably have a benzene ring. This one, let's draw our 3000 or our 1500 line. We'll ignore all of this stuff. This looks not, there's not a lot of stuff in this, in this particular spectrum, which makes it kind of tricky to analyze. This peak right here is a little pointier than normal, but that's a carbon oxygen double bond. And that's really all that we've got going on here. There's not a lot of exciting stuff. I want to look at, look at this peak again. Um, uh, like it, as far as I'm wondering, is this strong enough for me to consider that maybe there's a benzene ring, maybe not? I don't think there's a benzene ring in this molecule because I don't see any kind of sign of a carbon-carbon double bond. So I think that that's just kind of a, a relatively small but normal carbon-hydrogen peak. And then here's our last one. There, we ignore all of this stuff. This is something. We've got this right here. This big gold broad thing, there's an OH group right there. Uh, as far as what this is and like whether we should pay attention to it, I'm not sure. So you can see even like me with a lot of experience when I first look at an IR, I don't totally know how much stuff I should actually pay attention to. 
Now that we've just kind of broken this down, let's go back up to our four or our five molecules and start assigning things to each other. And the first one that I'm going to look for is, do I have a molecule that has a triple bond? I don't know why that's the first one I want to think about. Um, it looks like I do. Here's my triple bond molecule. It's a nitrile, a carbon nitrogen triple bond, which explains why we don't have a carbon hydrogen triple bond peak out there. So let's go ahead and get this one assigned. That's this guy right here. We've got one figured out. We have um, the second thing that I want to look for is OH groups because those are always really easy. So I've got one OH group and then I've got another. I have two molecules with OH groups and I have three choices of molecules with OH groups. So I got to figure out which is which. This is an OH group. Um, it looks like I think I have a benzene ring. I also have a carbon oxygen double bond. That's not consistent with these structures that are available to me in terms of my OH group. So something that I analyzed there is not quite right. Uh, my other OH, I've got an OH, and then I've got something that I'm not sure if I should pay attention to or not. I think what I'm going to do, because I feel really confident that this is a carbon oxygen double bond, um, and th then also definitely that I have an OH group, I think that I'm going to assign this spectrum to the molecule that has the carbon oxygen double bond as well as the OH group because I feel like I can really rely on that right there. And then um, for my other one, I'm just not, my other OH molecule, I'm not sure. I'll have to come back to that. This molecule is a boring spectrum, so that means it's gonna be a simple molecule with a carbon oxygen double bond which is this guy right here. So we'll assign this one to this spectrum. And so that means that we have come down to the last molecule and we've got to make a decision. This molecule has an OH group. We've got two left with OH groups. It's really boiling down to, does the molecule have a benzene ring in it or not? We have to make that decision. Well, notice that I did identify, I thought this is kind of an interesting looking peak. This could definitely be attributed to a carbon-carbon double bond, uh, even though this is a bit stronger than normal for a benzene ring. That I could understand because this molecule has a benzene ring, but it also has a carbon chain attached to it, and that the carbons in this part of the molecule would increase the intensity of that, these normal carbons right here. So I think that this molecule matches up with this spectrum right here.